Hey there, YouTubers. Right, so this is kind of a part two to the original benchmark video I did. Now, what's different in this video? Well, we have put on a much better CPU cooler. Um, this is a Be Quiet one in uh, 120 watt TDP. And I've already noticed quite a significant reduction in the temperatures versus the stock CPU cooler. Now, could I have put an even better one on here? Yes. Uh, could we put a second fan on here? Yes. But, uh, you know, this is probably about the extent of you really what you really need with the CPU. Now, uh, that said, we are going to adjust power limits in this video. And um, it honestly wouldn't be a bad idea to have an even better CPU cooler than this for that. So first thing we're going to do is start off with the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. I'm going to run all the benchmarks and then we're going to go back folks and I'm going to adjust power limits here. Okay. Somewhere in here we're even going to run this with uh, throttle stop. We're going to disable it. Um, potentially I'll do that. I'll do this one and then I'm going to do another one with throttle stop disabled so you can see that. And some of the various tests. I'm not going to do all of them. All right, so let's go ahead and do the benchmark here. Now, I believe the last time we ran this, 2522 was the number. We're also going to do Cinebench R20 in this video. And we'll do that with the, with the new CPU cooler and uh, power limits kicked in. And I did run that one earlier, so uh, you'll you probably see the score that I did, but we'll see if we can uh, duplicate it. All right, so 2540, that's a uh, increase. Um, I've done this twice now. We've been uh, higher than the original scores, and uh, this temperature has been less. I believe it got up to uh, 82 previously. So that's a good sign, right? I'm going to clear this out. Actually, let's see one thing here. There's always a concern about thermal throttling, which we did not get. I'm going to clear this out. And I'm going to turn this on, or disable it, I should say. Just do that. Save it. Now you should see over here, this should not go above the base clock, which it looks like it's cruising along at 2.59 gigahertz, okay? So if I remember correctly, the base clock for the CPU is 2.6. Um, I'm going to let this cool down a little bit more. It's probably, let's see, what was the minimum? 32. So that's as cool as it's going to get. We're going to run this again. Now you should see uh, with turbo disabled that this mark will be even less. And what I'll do is run Cinebench first with the turbo disabled. And then we'll enable it again and you can see what it what it would have got with the CPU cooler So I have some gaming videos in the future. Wow, so um, big drop in score, but look at that highest temperature, 43. Um, as you've seen in my other videos, you know, obviously this is this is somewhat of a cooling solution in its own. If you don't need a whole lot of performance out of your CPU, just cutting the 
turbo boost out of it. It will drop your temperature significantly. All right, so we'll start with uh, R20. Didn't hit the run. This is probably going to take forever, folks, just because of turbo being disabled. Let's see, though. Now, while this is going off, um, I will tell you, eventually we're going to turn on, we'll turn turbo boost on here shortly. But uh, this score right here represents turbo boost with power limit set to unlimited. And we'll, we'll do that again here shortly. But uh, you see that score is actually higher than the 11600K shown here. Now, this 11600K was done in a B560 motherboard. That's why it's where it is. Otherwise, I believe this would score up about 4,300. Um, shy of the 10700K. But for an i5, that was that was a pretty big number. So this is dragging along. So this is the uh, the second Intel... CPU I bought that's 11 gen. Um, we have ridiculous number of CPUs overall, but uh, I'm not honestly sure I'm going to buy any more 11 gens. It's um, they're just too similar to the performance of the 10 gen. Even though amazingly the single core scores are, are ridiculously higher, it's almost like they've turned into benchmarking monsters, but not necessarily that great gaming wise so we'll uh we'll hold off i believe uh, maybe six months from now or so all the 12th gen cpus will come out and we're gonna probably invest heavily in those i don't necessarily think we'll get one of each but we will definitely get uh i5s i7 i9 I should say we'll get all the i5s, one i7, one i9, and then maybe, I don't know how many i3s there will be, but we'll hit those two. So you see the score, 2362. This thing, this still makes it more powerful than i3-10320, according to this. This is run with uh, turbo-enabled, so... Um, Better performance, but much lower temperature than you would see with this guy, because this thing's pretty high strung. So that's that's kind of interesting. Um, all right. So let us turn turbo back on. And that's the end of that show for the day, folks. Because then the benchmarks on here are going to be very exciting with turbo off. Um, eventually I'll probably do a little gaming video, just like I always do, just so you guys can see it, see what the temps are. Right now, though, um, doesn't appear, here's the MSI afterburner, doesn't appear that there is a new, new revision of MSI afterburner to, uh, give me all the other stats that people like, uh, it's only showing utilization and CPU temp. So, all right. So we've turned that back on, given it enough time to cool off, I believe. Yeah, pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and punch it. And you should see the score um, shoot back up. It won't be as high as this, but it's going to, it'll be much higher, folks.
All right, so you can tell this is quite a bit faster. And boom, 38.89. Um, that's pretty good, folks. That is good. Of course, it got a lot hotter. You can see right there. Overall, not bad. All right, so well, this thing's cooling off. We're going to boost this up. This is PL1. And we're just going to go like this. That's unlimited. So that makes PL2 automatically jump up. We're going to apply it. We'll go over to the benchmark. And I'm going to let this cool off a moment. But uh, we're, we're looking for... 2540 to break that number. Will it happen? That's a good question. I'm going to drop a little bit more. And all right, we're close enough. So we still haven't seen thermal throttling, power limit throttling. So those are good signs. All right. So the number to beat 2540. This is power limit set to unlimited. Let's see how it does. Twenty-five, thirty-five. So uh, it was actually less. Um, why that is, don't know. All right, let's run this. So this has been run twice. The best score was right here. Uh, I'll tell you that was power limits set to unlimited. Let's see if we can uh, if we can break one of those. We want to be, at least be higher than this one. Otherwise. Power limits hasn't done anything for us. So 3881, that was not an improvement. So in this case, um, 
we did not make improvements with the power limit set to unlimited. Now, why is that? I cannot begin to tell you why, folks. But, uh, you know, usually Cinebench is higher with the power limits. And like I said, that was my highest that I've gotten with power limits. So, um, potentially the CPU's running a little hot. But other than that, folks, that's that's all I have for this video. Thanks for checking out. Please like, please subscribe. Thank you.